David Teniers, the younger, stands as one of the most prolific and influential Flemish artists of the 17th century. Born into an artistic family in Antwerp during the golden age of Flemish painting, he would go on to become a master of genre scenes, still lifes, and religious works. His particular genius lay in depicting everyday life with remarkable attention to detail and technical virtuosity, while simultaneously serving as a court painter and an important figure in the development of art collecting and curation. Through a career spanning more than six decades, he produced an extraordinary body of work that not only documented the social life of his time, but also helped shape the course of European painting. Born on December 15, 1610, in Antwerp, David Teniers the Younger came from an established artistic family. His father, David Teniers the Elder, was a respected painter known for his small-scale religious and alchemical scenes. The elder Teniers provided his son's first artistic education, instilling in him the fundamental techniques of painting and drawing that would serve as the foundation for his later mastery. The young Teniers grew up in an environment saturated with artistic influence. Antwerp in the early 17th century was one of Europe's premier artistic centers, home to such masters as Peter Paul Rubens and Anthony van Dyck. This rich cultural atmosphere, combined with his father's instruction, helped shape Teniers' early artistic development and influenced his future style. The Teniers family's artistic legacy extended beyond father and son. David's younger brother Abraham also became a painter, though he never achieved the same level of success. This familial immersion in art provided young David with a comprehensive understanding of both the creative and business aspects of painting, knowledge that would prove invaluable throughout his career. While his father provided his initial training, Teniers the Younger's artistic education extended beyond the family workshop. He became a master in the Antwerp Guild of St. Luke in 1632-33, an essential step for any artist wishing to practice their profession independently. The guild system provided important networking opportunities and access to patrons, which Teniers would later exploit to great effect. During his early career, Teniers developed a style that combined elements from various sources. He was influenced by Adrian Brower's peasant scenes and by the tradition of Peter Bruegel the Elder, while also incorporating elements from his father's work. This period saw him establishing his reputation through small-scale paintings of peasant life, tavern scenes, and rural festivities. The 1630s marked a period of intense artistic development for ten years. He began to receive important commissions and developed his characteristic style of painting, marked by careful observation and technical precision. His early works show a particular interest in the lives of ordinary people, a theme that would remain central to his artistic output throughout his career. A crucial turning point in Tenius' career came in 1637, when he married Anna Bruegel, daughter of Jan Bruegel the Elder, and granddaughter of Peter Bruegel the Elder. This marriage connected him to one of the most prestigious artistic families in the Netherlands, and brought him into close contact with Peter Paul Rubens, who had been Jan Bruegel's guardian and was one of the witnesses at the wedding. This advantageous marriage not only elevated Tenier's social status, but also provided him with valuable connections to potential patrons. The union produced seven children and lasted until Anna's death in 1656. Several years later, in 1656, Tenier's married Isabella de Fren, demonstrating his continued social mobility and connection to wealthy merchant families. The influence of the Bruegel family on Teniers' work cannot be overstated. Through his marriage to Anna, he gained access to the artistic traditions and techniques of one of the most important dynasties in Flemish painting. This connection is visible in his work through his attention to detail and his interest in depicting scenes of daily life, though he would develop these inherited influences into his own distinctive style. His peasant scenes are notable for their sympathetic but unsentimental portrayal of rural life. Unlike some of his contemporaries who depicted peasants as crude or comical figures, Teniers often presented them with dignity while maintaining a sense of naturalism. His tavern scenes, while sometimes showing revelry and excess, typically avoid harsh moral judgment. Notable examples include peasants celebrating Twelfth Night, 
1635, and the Village Festival, 1646, which demonstrate his ability to capture the atmosphere of rural celebrations while paying careful attention to individual expressions and gestures. These works are characterized by their lively composition and careful observation of human behavior. Teniers demonstrated exceptional skill in handling paint, particularly in his ability to create subtle gradations of tone and texture. His technique was characterized by thin, fluid brushwork and a sophisticated understanding of light and atmosphere. He was particularly adept at rendering different materials and surfaces, from rough peasant clothing to gleaming metal vessels. His mastery of paint handling is evident in works such as The Alchemist, 1649, where he depicts various metallic and glass surfaces with remarkable precision. His ability to render textures and surfaces made him particularly skilled at still life elements within his genre scenes. Beyond his technical abilities, Teniers was a master of composition. He frequently employed diagonal arrangements and sophisticated spatial relationships to create dynamic scenes. His works often feature multiple groups of figures arranged in a way that leads the viewer's eye through the composition while maintaining a sense of natural, uncontrived arrangement. His work typically employed a restricted palette dominated by browns, greys, and earth tones, punctuated by carefully placed touches of brighter colors. This approach created a harmonious overall effect while allowing specific elements to stand out. His understanding of light was sophisticated often using it to create mood and atmosphere, as well as to define form. In 1651, Archduke Leopold Wilhelm, governor of the Spanish Netherlands, appointed Teniers as his court painter and curator of his art collection. This appointment marked a significant shift in Teniers' career and social status. The Archduke was an avid art collector, and Teniers played a crucial role in building and maintaining his collection. As court painter, Teniers created numerous works for the Archduke, including detailed pictures of his art gallery. These gallery paintings represent an important innovation in art history, as they provide valuable documentation of collecting practices and the display of art in the 17th century. Teniers also produced an illustrated catalogue of the Archduke's collection, the Theatrum Pictorium, 1660, which is considered one of the first systematic catalogues of an art collection. His curatorial duties included advising on acquisitions, arranging and maintaining the collection, documenting the works through paintings and catalogues, organizing restorations, and negotiating with artists and dealers. This position allowed Teniers to develop expertise in the works of other masters and influenced his own artistic development. His gallery paintings provide invaluable information about 17th century collecting practices and the presentation of art. Teniers maintained a highly organized and productive studio, employing assistants while maintaining close control over the quality of works produced under his name. His working methods included preliminary studies, where he made numerous drawings and oil sketches as preparation for his paintings. These studies allowed him to perfect his compositions and figure arrangements before executing the final work. Materials and techniques, where Teniers typically worked on oak panels for smaller works and canvas for larger compositions. His paint handling was remarkably consistent throughout his career, characterized by thin, fluid applications of paint and careful attention to surface texture. Workshop organization, where his studio was organized to maximize efficiency while maintaining quality. He employed assistants for routine tasks while reserving the most important elements of each painting for his own hand. Legacy and impact, where David Teniers, the younger's influence on art history extends far beyond his own lifetime. His works were widely collected and copied during his lifetime and after his death. His work reflects these historical developments while also contributing to their evolution. His ability to adapt to changing artistic tastes and social circumstances while maintaining his distinctive style demonstrates both his artistic integrity and his practical understanding of the art market. David Teniers the Younger emerges as a pivotal figure in 17th century art history, bridging the gap between traditional Flemish genre painting and more refined court art. His technical mastery, versatility, and innovative approach to both painting and art curation 
mark him as an artist of exceptional importance. His influence extended beyond his own artwork to shape the development of art education, collection, and documentation practices. His legacy continues to influence our understanding of 17th century life and art, while his paintings remain valuable examples of technical excellence and keen observation. As both an artist and a cultural figure, Teniers helped shape the artistic landscape of his time while creating works that continue to resonate with viewers today. His career demonstrates the potential for artists to serve not only as creators, but also as important cultural mediators and preservers of artistic heritage. The enduring appeal of Teniers' work lies in his ability to combine technical excellence with genuine human insight, creating images that are both historically valuable and artistically compelling. His contributions to art history, both as a painter and as a curator, continue to influence our understanding of 17th century art and culture, making him one of the most significant figures in Flemish Baroque art.